Hey, it's Joey with TechNet Edge. We're here at TechEd 2009. Sitting here with Corey Hines. Hi, Corey. How are you doing? Not too bad. I got a golf club. I, I see you've got a golf club, a very big golf club. That's right. So uh, earlier in the week, I got a chance to hang out with you in the pre-con session. You did indeed. Talked a little bit about Server 2008 R2. Talked a lot about it. <laughs> An entire day. Oh, yeah. So one of the cool things and new features that we've got in Server 2008 R2, along with Windows 7, is direct access. Oh, yes, direct access. That's probably, like, of, of all the features that, that's in there, the one that I think is the biggest game changer for anyone who's got to manage a computer, period, bar none. Um, because you get a scenario where, I mean, and this is a little extreme, but entirely possible, you got a guy sitting on an airplane, the airplane's got wireless, and, and, and you're sitting in the office, and you can connect to his laptop. He doesn't even need to be logged on. Maybe he forgot it on in his backpack, and it's still powered on and somehow magically connected to the, to the, the wireless, magically paid 25 bucks for 30 minutes, and you can connect <laughs> to it and manage it. I mean, that, that's what direct access is. It's absolutely fantastic. So it's, it's beyond just letting my users be able to connect to the corporate intranet at any given time. That management piece is really where the big Yeah, exactly. Is. I mean, it's not VPN, right? So we're used to VPN. VPN is user-initiated with a whole lot of pain. You get the little devices, you got the security, you get all that annoying stuff. Um, with direct access, it's on the computer level. So when the machine boots up, it just connects, period. There's no, the user doesn't need it, it's, it's at the machine level. There's a group policy that goes on the machine, and as soon as, as soon as the machine turns on, that policy kicks in and hooks them into the corporate network, and hooks them into the DA server that's sitting right on the edge. Um, and that, that puts them effectively on the corporate land. They're just another machine, right? It's just an extension of the corporate land. So they're sitting there, they can browse shares, they can ping stuff, they can connect to things, but also you're on the inside, you can connect to them. You can connect right to their machine at a computer level. They don't need to be logged on to it. You just need the proper credentials. They can suck down policies. They can suck down stuff from, from System Center, all those things. So some of the cool questions that we got asked in our session, uh, I want to kind of cover now. So the first one being, um, in terms of direct access, obviously IPv6 is playing a big story yep. with, with direct access. Where does IPv6 need to be when we start doing so the So IPv6 takes care of the, the security end of, of DA, right? Um, now, you might be thinking, well, that means I need IPv6 everywhere. You don't. You only need it on the endpoints. You need it on the DA server. You need it on the client, right? Now, if you want to do client to end, like inside the network server security and you want to lock down the connection even further than just to the edge, you, you need IPv6 there. But fundamentally, you need it on, on the client, you need it on the DA server. And it just tunnels it over IPv4, so it goes across the regular plain old internet. Um, goes across NAT devices, goes across you know whatever's out there. If, if, if you needed IPv6 in the wild, you just couldn't do it. So the endpoints are built on, on an IPv6 connection from the DA client to the DA server, and that's just routed over IPv4 just by addressing it so it's NAT friendly and all that kind of stuff. So it's not a, you know, a company-wide, worldwide IPv6, IPv6 deployment. They do that on purpose, don't they? Yeah, they do. All right, cool. Uh, um, one other thing. So when I'm connected via direct access, is all of my traffic that I'm doing, like if I'm sitting at Starbucks and I'm connecting out and, and I'm surfing out in TechNet Edge or something, mm -hmm. is all of that stuff going out via the, the corporate nope, network? not at all. So just like in VPN, there's this concept of split tunneling where you could put a, uh, you know, a routing table on the client that said, these networks hit the VPN, these networks go through whatever you're connected to. Um, DA works the same way. There's this new technology in, in Win7 called a, a uh, oh, name resolution policy table, NRPT, name resolution policy table. I had to think about it for a second. And it's basically split routing on, on domain names, right? So in this table, there's a couple of entries, like you know, if you're Microsoft.com, for example, and anything you go to that's .microsoft.com gets bundled up and sent through the DA connection. Everything else, whatever you're connected to. So your Starbucks network, your, your airplane network, whatever the case is. And can you do that on other, other domains, like subdomains? So like Yeah, it's just, just an encompassing set of, of domain names that are defined as the stuff that's inside, that, that's internal. And then everything else is external. Now, in order to make it work, you've got to have a distinct internal DNS name and an external DNS name. But, you know, if you know anything about AD design, you've done that anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so deployment of this sucker. I mean, you go, you download the deployment guide. It's not the smallest of documents. No, not at all. <laughs> are, are there some kind of high level points that you can kind of hit in terms of what you need to actually do the deployment? So you need a couple of things set up. You need number one, Win7 on the client. You need a machine with um, an internal external interface as the DA server. The external interface has to have two legitimate public IP addresses. They can't be 
um, you know, like the, the, the one of the three scopes that's not recognized as officially public, the 131 or the 192 or 172. They've got to be real public addresses because IPv6 does math on, on the IPs and, and requires real, honest to God, public IPs. So you need two of those um, on the outside of the DA server, consecutive, like one and two, three and four, five and six. Um, then you need, a, you need a PKI because the authentication that's done is based on certificates. Right, so that all the clients need a workstation certificate. The DA server needs a workstation certificate. Um, that's the other piece. And the third piece is there's a couple of web servers you've got to build up. Um, so there's one web server called the inside-outside server. We have a silly name, but that's what it's called. And it's basically a web server that lives inside the corporate network that any client as part of the DA policy that comes down, when they first boot up, they try and connect to this, this inside-outside server. And if they can hit it, they're inside and they ignore DA. If they can't hit it, they're outside and they start thinking about what do I do DA for and what don't I do at DA for. And that's basically it. Those are the big pieces. Now it's 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 a 77 page deployment guide. Um, a lot of the deployment guide is you know setting up here's how you build your domain controller and your group policy. So the reality is there's maybe 20, 25 pages of, of pure DA configuration. Um, it's not a trivial task, but it's not horrifically difficult either. You mentioned the CA, and I, and I just want to ask, this question also came up in our session. Do I have to go out and, and buy a, a, a certificate out there for, from public, or can no. I have my own internet? No, as long as the certificates on the clients and the certificates on the DA server chain to the same trusted route, whatever it is, you're fine. It's, you've just got to be able to validate it as a trusted, healthy, issued certificate, and the DA server will do a krill check, so you've got to have that in place, too. So, best place to go to get more information on DA? Microsoft.com, look for the DA deployment guide. There's a ton of really good stuff up there. I, uh, I actually asked that question myself, and, and they sent me a list of stuff this long. So there's a lot of good information out there right now. All right, Corey, thanks for taking the time no, with me. No problem, man. Let's go golfing. All right, see you.